It's October 7th, 2023. We're in Active Inference Institute. We'll see how to capture just the audio portion of a YouTube video on the Institute YouTube site. We would want to do this for a couple of reasons. One is if we want to get started transcribing or doing audio editing on a YouTube video prior to the time that YouTube finishes their processing. That can take up to 24 to 48 hours. The other reason is that some of the video capture or the audio capture tools, for instance, Audacity, allow lossless capture of audio directly from the web uh, as opposed to some of the tools uh, that allow only a reduced audio quality. Let's get started. We have gotten a notification through email that a session is about to begin. And we'll now go, we'll click on the message from the uh, email. We see that we get started with this recent session. It just ended a few minutes before the we went out. Uh, we're going to start Audacity and do some setup. We need to make sure that we are actually capturing from the web. I'm not going to go through that whole exercise. One thing that it's important to shut off is sound activated recording. You don't want to use that because you, the recording process stops if there are any sizable pauses during the course of the recording. That will make your timestamps get out of sync with what's actually on the screen. So we make sure that we've rolled the video back to the beginning uh, at minute zero, second zero, zero. We turn the volume all the way up. We turn the volume on our desktop all the way up. If you have time to do it, it's a good idea to go in and adjust the volume so that you're not um, hitting the volume bars at the top and bottom of the Audacity track. That will prevent those funny uh, noises, uh, the, the poor quality recording that you'll sometimes get when there's a very loud voice. If one um, speaker speaks very loudly and others speak softly, uh, that can be rather difficult. I assume there are some tools that will do that automatically. Uh, we won't go into how that might be done. Now, you may have noticed the video that we're capturing is a little over an hour long. What we can do is just set an alarm clock so we can let this run, or you can listen to it, doesn't make any difference. I'm going to remove most of the time in this video. I already did that actually. Now we've jumped forward to the point that the video has ended, one hour and nine minutes into it. So now uh, we've come back to our machine, we've stopped the video, and we're going in to do editing. There's a certain amount of dead air before Audacity shut off, so we'll delete that. We're going to clean up um, the little bits of noise at the end of the video. Uh, you can, in Audacity, you can use Control-L or there is a little icon that looks like an emp a break between two extents of video. We'll see that clean up in a moment. I'll click on, the, there we go. We'll click there. That simply deletes 
all the sound. It has exactly the same effect as Control L. Now we're we are going to try to save the project. We're making we're making sure it goes into the right location on our local file system. We're trying to save it under this name. We're doing using Save As. Okay, the file the AUP that is the audio name. Oops. We're trying to use save as rather than save, and that doesn't work. So we'll just do save project as a straight save. That allows saving in place. Usually I don't have to use the Audacity backup. Um, that is uh, just for convenience. We What we're going to be using is the Wave version. I mentioned the Wave is a high quality, uh, lossless audio format. So we go into this Morph Streams, session one of Morph Streams. Um, this is a good enough uh, file name to save it. Uh, we, we record a little bit of metadata, uh, typically the names of the speakers, maybe the name of the interviewer. I think both David and Sarah spoke here and Daniel. I like to get the guests in the order that they first spoke, then the host, and then any members of Active Inference Institute who speak. We can put those at the end as additional artists. I'm scraping the file name the way <coughs> YouTube viewers will see it and we'll use maybe a little bit of cleanup of that. Uh, here's a talk that they they're discussed the paper that they're discussing. Uh, in this case we're just putting that in as part of the name of the session. Uh, we'll use that same document label uh, morph stream 001 hyphen one. The hyphen one means the session number within the series. The series would be all of the presentations by David or Sarah or any preliminary discussion. The preliminary discussion would be a 001 uh, and the one in this case indicates this is the first time the guests are speaking. Uh, I, under album title, I like to say Active Inference Institute plus the name of the um, the volume. In this case, it's Morph Streams. It could be uh, Guest Streams and so on. I like to put the actual uh, YouTube video name in as the comment. Uh, I don't seem to be able to use the second name, line of the comment. You can put something in there, but it gets deleted. I don't know if that's um, my operating system, file system that's doing that, or whether Audacity just doesn't do that. Now we're going to go and look and make sure things were saved. Yes, indeed, there's AUP and some temporary files that exist only as long as we're actually editing the audio with Audacity. And it is building the WAV file um, when it gets done. Uh, it saves it. You can now, uh, there's a little extra work. It's because you'll notice the both tracks are identical. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use a high quality, um, oh, I'm sorry. What I'm doing here is saving an, an additional format that I, I'm saving it as an mp3 so that I have the option of copying that mp3 into my cell phone and just listening to it. You'll, you should see that that's much larger than the .wav file. Sure enough, that's only 20 meg as opposed to one and a half gigabytes in the wave. Well, now we're going to go and make that big wave file smaller. I mentioned the left and right channels are identical. 
So we're going to select all tracks and do a mix stereo down to mono. That does not lose any actual information. So when we transcribe, we're going to get just as much information as we would otherwise. So we save that wave, we save it in place because we don't really need the, the stereo. There's no additional real information in the stereo version. I, I close without saving, so I'm going to save the MP3 also. It was a little bit of redundancy. Um, I like to save the Audacity original, that is the full um, or lossless recording as stereo, uh, but I don't use that. If you were to go and save the Audacity, that would force it to mono since that's the most mono mono aural is the the most recent version but we're going to just exit and not save not save the project the project file is even larger than the wave because there's a lot of additional data So the wave is three quarters of a gig, and the audacity you see is one and a half gig. So it's a roughly identical sizes in the two, in the left track and the right track. Okay, uh, all that covered was the capture of the WAVE file. It's a separate operation to use, um, actually use the audio file to create text. We covered that on a different video. So that's what we have to look at for the moment, and I will terminate the recording now.